Yeah. It was kind of humbling the first time it happened. I can tell you, it was like in uh, San Diego for a radio conference out there. We were like stopped somewhere to get a bite to eat, and I had a, a jacket on, and they saw it and just went gaga over it. So it was just kind of, you know, again, humbling to know that we were part of something that was no longer just a part of New Orleans, but a part of the culture of the United States, if not the world. You know, uh, during our fund drives, we would, you know, map out where the donations were coming from and realize that there really were people from all around the world listening to the station. Yeah. Religiously. Religiously. What facilitated that? Because I imagine when you start, you're not necessarily distributing for all these digital channels. What, when, did, when did that come about? Mm, I would say it started 2002, three, somewhere thereabouts, when streaming really, I guess, was really kicking in. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we, social media became a part of our, our being for all of us, it became so much easier to spread the word about OZ. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember f when Facebook started, um, I won't say it's the bane of my existence, but you know, when, when Facebook started, I remember going into the office and telling everybody, it's like, guys, yeah, this social media thing is the future. We need to make sure that we're all a part of it and that we're spreading the word about the station. And now you just look at it and it's, it's an animal. It's, it, it just can't be contained. You can't avoid it. No, you can't yeah. avoid it. Um, and again, there are people from all around the world. We have like a list. I remember um, a listener in, in Germany that would always let us know if somebody was going off form.